check it out, Carnegie South Public Library's Adult Services Podcast. Today, Becky and Sarah are going to talk about Comfort Reads. Amy and Angie are going to talk about everything you want to know about Overdrive Digital Books. And we've also got a few contributions from our community. So I was listening to NPR the other day, Becky, and they had this cute little article on how a recent study showed that more and more people are turning to comfort entertainment. So like old favorite TV shows or books or the music that just like really helps them relax. And yeah, I would absolutely agree with it. That's definitely what I'm doing. I've been rewatching The Office for like the hundredth time. Um, just because it's my go-to comfort show. And then I've also been rereading Harry Potter for the millionth time because it's just, it's, it's it makes me feel better <laughs> about everything else that's going on. I have honestly never seen The Office. Really? Oh, you are missing out. It's my favorite <laughs> show of all time. Definitely people seem to like it. <laughs> it's just there's just I don't know there's something so relatable about how awkward the characters are that uh, it's just it's just very comforting especially like I said I've watched it so many times at this point that it's just kind of nice to have in the background when I'm doing other stuff absolutely I I get that thing where when a fictional character is doing something embarrassing I get the secondhand embarrassment so I tend not to be able to handle that sort of programming. Oh, there's so, so much secondhand embarrassment in the office, but that's what makes it so wonderful. <laughs> it's been half the time cringing, but it's, it's like, it's a good kind of cringing. Just really relate to the situations, I guess. That's um, awesome. I've also been watching a lot of crappy horror movies just because that's what my fiance likes to watch. And there's just something kind of, I don't know, I don't want to say soothing because it's people getting murdered, but the <laughs> plots are all so similar. And you know, A happens, then B happens, then C happens, then one person survives. And there's something nice about the predictability. That makes sense. The, the familiar, the comforting, even though both like the secondhand embarrassment and people getting murdered just ramp my anxiety right through the roof. <laughs> I mean, Everyone's I can understand comfort that. is different. Yeah. Um, so, what are you? What are you watching and reading? I've been rewatching Star Trek: The Next Generation. Okay. And I've been um, dipping into my strategic romance reserve. Ooh. Okay. What's what is that? What's in there? I always have a selection of romance novels from my favorite authors that I haven't read yet. So I'm keeping them for a rainy day and it is pouring. So I am, I am reading them now. I mean, if not now, then when, right? Exactly. I, so. I, don't, I don't read a lot of romance. I really like Outlander, but that's, you know, a mix of romance and just, you know, fiction but I've never read any, you know, true romance novels. I probably should at some point. Yeah. I recommend it. There's, um, it, like a horror movie, there's some predictability that you know that this person and that person are going to meet and there's going to be conflict and then things resolve and it ends happily. So that's but I also really like just thriller books even mm -hmm. when you know they may not be the best written because they always yes there's a twist at the end that kind of makes it worth reading those kinds of books over and over but there's still some kind of predictability in in the plot which is kind of nice and the author makes all the difference because even though it can be very predictable um they can do amazing things with it by setting or character or just the quality of the writing itself yeah definitely i mean i i just finished reading the family upstairs by lisa jewel and it was a really fast read but she she is very good at her thrillers i mean there, she keeps you engaged the entire time. And I feel like she does that with a lot of her books. Um, what's another one that I read that I really liked? Oh, Perfect Little Children by Sophie Hanna. Huh. That one was a weird one. That was very different than my normal thriller type book. But 
it was just, it was not what I was expecting. So I don't know. I really liked that one. But yeah, I don't know. It was one that we had sitting on the shelf that, you know, before we closed, I was like, I'm going to grab this book. And I ended up actually really enjoying it. Yep. Um, and uh, the other thing I'm doing is rereading um, Lois McMaster Bujold's For Cossigan? Kossig- For I'm honestly not sure how you pronounce that. For Cossigan Saga with uh, Miles and his mom. I've never actually heard of it, but oh my gosh um it is a series that's around around probably about as long as i have um (laughs) and i don't know it's just a series that i go back to over and over and over again throughout my life so yeah see those are the things i like to do that's why i like rereading harry potter it just it brings me that sense of comfort and I know what's going to happen and I can relate to the characters and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know my fiance, his comfort reads um, are like really, really crappy adventure novels. He (laughs) really likes, not that, oh, not that they're crappy, but they're all kind of the same. Like he really likes the Preston and Child books Mm. and he reads those over and over again. And like I said, he just, they're fun reads and it just gives him comfort knowing the same types of thing happen in each book, but at least with some variation to keep it interesting. So one way that you can access some of your favorite comfort reads is through Overdrive, our ebook platform. And we have Angie and Amy here to tell us a little bit how you can access Overdrive with your library card. Hi, everybody. This is Amy and Angie. Um, We're coming to you from our remote locations here, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about digital books. Um, We're talking e-audio and e-books, books that you can listen to on your computer or device and books you can read on a computer or device. So one thing we wanted to talk to you was about the basic rules of our downloadable books. Um, So I'm going to kind of turn it over to Angie. Angie, if you want to tell us like what kind of card do you need to have the to access these books are there limits to the checkout time you know any any basic rules you want to share with us would be great okay hi it's angie also an adult services librarian here um overdrive overdrive and libby are one and the same they are both um owned by overdrive libby's kind of the the newer version of the app to get the um downloadable material um but the basic rules um to get overdrive you do have to have a City of Dubuque resident library card. We have been getting some some voicemail and email questions about that while the library has been closed. So um, you do have to be a city resident to get a library card. If you do live outside the city limits, um, if you live in Dubuque County, um, Dubuque County is part of a, I believe it's a statewide consortium called Bridges. And um, you can access that through the Dubuque County Library. Right now the Dubuque County Library website has a a link to get an online card if you don't already have a card with them. Um, But if you do have a Carnegie Stout Library card and you live in the city limits, you can hop on right away and get up to 15 items checked out. That's downloadable ebooks, downloadable audiobooks. Uh, They're two-week checkout and they can be renewed um, continuously until either um, <laughs> we don't own the item anymore, which we'll get to in a minute, or until someone else puts it on hold. So two weeks and then it automatically expires and you don't have to renew it. Uh, the best part about the downloadable books is <clears throat> not that we charge fines anymore, but they just automatically return themselves. So you don't even have to think about, oh gosh, I have to bring those back to the library or they're going to be overdue. They just return themselves at the end of the checkout period, which is fantastic and easy. And and the other great thing about that is our OverDrive catalog is accessible 24-7. So even when the library isn't closed due to a national pandemic, you can be sitting at home at midnight thinking, gosh, I really need something to read. And you can get on OverDrive and you can check out a book. So it's a really great, great service. I use it all the time, all the time. (laughs) Yes, so do I. I'm terrible. I don't think I've read a paper book in a really long time. I shouldn't say that, but, you know, that's the truth. (laughs) Well, I'm someone who who likes to have a couple different formats of books because 
Um, and it's not always possible. We don't always have all books in all the different formats, but sometimes I'll, I'll have the CD audio book that I checked out from the library and I'll read the ebook while at home. So while I'm driving back and forth to work during normal times, I can listen in my car, which still has a CD player. And, uh, and then at home I can read the ebook so I can keep hopping back and forth between the two. Um, oh, I was going to mention also when you have something checked out with, when you're within two days of it expiring, um, if you go into the, into your overdrive, um, bookshelf, um, on your, in your account, it'll tell you, um, I think it's when it's less than three days, you'll be able to either renew or request. If it says request again, that means someone else is waiting for it. If it, if it says renew, that means you're able to renew it right on the spot. So that's something that brings up a really good point about the different methods of checkout or not necessarily checkout, but the different methods of how we purchase these books from um, publishers. So you may wonder, why do I have to put this digital book on hold? And why do I, why is there a hold list of, you know, three, five, 10, 15 people for this book? Why can't everybody be reading the same book at the same time? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's the limits that are put on us as librarians and libraries by the publishers. So there's a couple of different methods of, um, there's a couple of different, is it methods? I don't know if methods the words. It's a couple of different ways that we can purchase this, purchase this and the limits that the publishers put on to us. One of them is one copy, one user. Um, that means that one person can be reading that item at a time and it's an item that we own theoretically forever. Um, occasionally those do disappear from our catalog, but that's just things that happen. You could, that can even happen if you buy an Amazon book. And then the other, another one is called metered access. So somewhere out there, the publishers have decided that the lifetime of a print book is 26 checkouts or like two years. So sometimes when we buy a digital book in audio or in ebook format, you can get it. We can have it for 26 checkouts, which means after 26 checkouts, we have to repurchase that book or like two years, like we'll get it for two years or whatever um, is the fastest. And then at the end of that period, we have to repurchase that book. That is, that is um, important for people to understand when they wonder why we don't have, when they want, wonder why we don't have like a full series in a row. Uh, because if the book has 10, 15, 20 books in the series, we would have to keep repurchasing all of those books over and over again. Um, and so sometimes certain things have we've let lapse because we have the choice of buying a book, you know, that's 15 years old or buying the newest book that everybody wants right now. So as both of us are, are, are people who buy some of some uh, different collections for the library, including the digital items. And we have to make those tough choices all the time. We try to have as much as we can, but I, I think a lot of people don't realize the eBooks are limited. Downloadable audiobooks are limited and they're not, um, they're not permanent copies, quote unquote. Like if you had a, a paper book, theoretically you could leave it on the shelf until it fell apart, however long that takes. And that's another thing that's really important to note too, is that typically when we buy paper books, we do get a decent discount from the vendors that sell us those books, but it's the complete opposite with digital books. Um, an ebook or an e-audio could cost you three, cost us three to five times more than what the list price is. So if you wonder why we don't have 10 to 15 copies of the hottest book and why there's six month long wait lists, it's because we just can't afford to buy 10 copies of a book that's $109. So it's $109 per audio per copy. Book. Yeah. 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 The ebooks are slightly cheaper, but they still, uh, they still run out. I mean, they still have limited. Um, there are some that, that are not 26 checkouts, but they're just 12 months period. Mm -hmm. however many times they can be checked out in 12 months and then after that we have to buy it again yeah and it's just something that it's how the you know the publishers are worried that we're taking away their business not really sure if that's true or not but it's just the deals that we've had to make in order to be able to provide you all with this content and that's another thing that's really interesting is that not every book is available in e-content not every book that is published in paper is available as an ebook or an e-audio. And even within certain series, not every book is available in all those formats. I was just um, 
looking at the William Kent Kruger, one of his series, and like the first four or five are available, and like the last five are available, but the middle chunk is not available in downloadable audio for some reason. So it's just it's just very strange as to how and why these are released that way. But you know, we do our best to get what we can get. <laughs> there are uh, there is a young adult series, the um, Throne of Glass series that I've listened to. And um, with every book that's come out in the Throne of Glass series, I would check out the CD audio book. And then the last book just came out, what, last year or the year before, and um, they suddenly no longer made it on CD. It was, um, it was, I believe, just through Audible, and they didn't even offer it um, as a library option. So they just changed that, like, literally for the last book of a series. So sometimes those are some of the traps that we fall in when we don't have what we <laughs> what you're looking for because yeah. believe me we try we do try yeah there's a lot of authors and i don't know if it's necessarily authors but publishers that they release their books in audible content only or only you know they might only be an ebook that's available through kindle so it's not it's it's just not something that we can purchase and if it's an audible only book then it's probably not even available in cd audio and it's definitely not going to be available in downloadable audio for a library to purchase and that's not necessarily i mean i know people uh want to go after authors and say you know why don't you do this and that's not usually the author's choice it's just part no. of their contract and believe me authors are not unless they're like the james patterson's of the world they're not rolling in the dough so they're gonna make the best deal that they can for their own their own selves they aren't getting these giant residual checks i mean they might get a check for three bucks once a month for their work so if you think about it that way you can't really you know they're going to make the best deal that they can and then we're going to do the best that we can to get the content the way that we can do it you know this is kind of a side note but um for tv series um you know this isn't through overdrive or anything, but I order the CD or the DVDs um, discs for TV, sh TV series. And um, so many TV shows are streaming on the different net, you know, Netflix, Hulu, all those things. So many of them are streaming that they don't put out um, discs anymore for the TV series, but they might have put out the first disc or two mm -hmm. um, kind of as an enticement, I think, <laughs> because uh, for example, like a Grace and Frankie TV show that's on Netflix, they released the first maybe one or two seasons on DVD, and then they've done nothing since, even though we're up to like six or seven on on Netflix right now. Um, so it's just these these different formats where streaming, whether it's only through Audible or through, um, you know, like movies and TV series, it's kind of a challenge for librarians to get all of the material we want to get for people because it's just sometimes not not even an option. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, I mean, Overdrive does have streaming movies that we have a small collection on. Their, their, <clears throat> their selection is not that fantastic. You're, you're hardly ever going to find a feature film, like a really big blockbuster film available to libraries in that sort of a streaming content. It's just not going to happen unless it's probably 10 15 years old they yeah. just they just aren't willing to release that for libraries to buy because they feel like we're giving away that content for free which we are i mean we pay for it but we let many 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 people use it so right it's just you know we we do what we can with the limitations and we are grateful for what they do give us access to because there was a time when you couldn't find anything on ebook or downloadable audio there was just no way for libraries to lend that content but now that that's become so popular that you know we are doing our best to offer you what we can we've seen those numbers go up too our usage has has definitely increased during this unusual time yeah interestingly the the audio downloadable audio has gone down but it's because people aren't commuting like they used to but the yeah. ebook has gone up drastically not drastically but it's gone up quite a bit and that's i think it's because people are more sedentary right now it's easier to sit and read a book you're not moving around you aren't listening to it but you know you can do a lot of great things with a downloadable audio you can turn on the book and you can i don't know knit clean 
work out. I mean, you can do all that to a downloadable audio as well. So just, just food for thought. If you get sick and tired of listening to music, you can always listen to a book. I used to do that as, as just uh, <laughs> something to help me get to sleep. So I would just be ready for bed and, and uh, listening to an audio book. And it, you know, of course, sometimes it kept me up later than it should have. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just but one yeah, more chapter. Are, yeah, no kidding. Of course, that happens with any, any format, right? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Whether it's ebook or not. But um, yeah, we love those downloadables. Yep. And so, just to let you guys know, you can request downloadable books um, just like you do a paper book. So if you log into your library account and put in a purchase request, you can request a book in e-audio or in ebook format. Um, like we said, if, if we can't get it, we'll let you know. If we can, we'll let you know that way also. We cannot put holds on downloadable materials like we do for paper materials. So we usually we'll send you an email or you'll see in the purchase suggestion form that'll say this book will be available after this date or this time. And then you can go in and check it out or place a hold on it if somebody gets to it before you do. But that is, um, I don't know, do you have anything else to say about downloadables, Angie? Not that I can think of, but if you have any questions, definitely just send us an email. Um, your librarian at dubuque.lib.ia.us. If you have any questions about your account or any anything that we talked about today, feel free to send us an email. And to finish out this week's podcast episode, we have a few book recommendations from local readers. Becky, Ben, and Mike share books that they have been enjoying this week. If there's a book, movie, or music that you've been enjoying, please submit a short audio recording of what you have been enjoying to yourlibrarian at dubuque.lib.ia.us and we'll include it in a future podcast episode. Hi, Dubuque librarians. Thank you so much for your fun podcast. Um, it's a really great way to keep in touch and learn more about the library. I just wanted to share with you the book that I'm reading right now, which is called A Little More Human by Fiona Mazel. Uh, I'm about two thirds of the way through it, but I still have no idea what's going on or what's going to happen. It's really interesting. There's a lot of like mystery and suspense that I'm really enjoying right now. But I will say there was like a vague mention of a flu just like a casual mention, like, oh, six people had the flu this week. And it's really got me on edge. I don't know if anyone else is having that kind of feeling uh, in their reading or watching TV, but it's like, I feel like I'm waiting for the outbreak everywhere. So it's a, it's a put a new color in my reading life. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks, librarians. Hello. Ben Eagle, Reader's Advisory Librarian with Carnegie Stout here. I just wanted to share a couple books that I read recently and loved. Uh, they're both by author Jeff Vandermeer. They both take place in the same universe, although they're not sequential. Uh, they're called Born and Dead Astronauts. Now, they're, the, both these sci-fi works are post-apocalyptic. So anyone who likes that kind of genre, I definitely recommend Born. Um, Dead Astronauts is much more experimental in form, but I would definitely recommend that one to anybody who likes experimental fiction. Now, the writing is great in both of them, just as descriptions of nature and consciousness. Um, both books, the main theme is bioengineering. Uh, the company, it's just called The Company, this building that came in, and they're kind of the cause of this post-apocalyptic world. Um, it experiments on animals and humans and just changes their forms and experiments with life and death. Um, it's just really fascinating stuff. Now, both these books deal with these issues, but Born has the more straightforward storyline. Now, some of the creatures in Born just think of this giant bear-like creature that can fly uh, and destroys everything in its sight. It's, this guards the company building in Born. Um, just think on scale, King Kong or Godzilla kind of thing. And then Born is a creature who looks like a plant or an upside-down vase or squid is the description he often gets. 
and he can change forms. And then dead astronauts, it's just very experimental in form, which can make it tricky to read at first until you get the flow of it. But uh, you don't know whether the person talking is dead or alive or in two bodies at once. It's just a lot of fun, and I recommend both of them. Hi, guys. This is Mike at the library. I just started a new book, Arrowwood, by Laura McHugh, and it's really good so far. I thought I'd tell you about it. Uh, like the novels by Dubuque author Heather Gudenkoff, Arrowwood is a psychological thriller set in Iowa. The main character is Arden Arrowwood, a young woman who returns to her hometown of Keokuk, Iowa, after she inherits her family's three-story, 150-year-old house overlooking the Mississippi River. Here's a passage from Chapter 1. Two blocks down, I pulled into the driveway at Arrowwood and stopped the car, taking in my first view of the house in nearly a decade. I had expected it to seem smaller now that I was grown, the way most things from childhood shrink over time. But Arrowwood, built in the heavily ornamented Second Empire style, was as imposing as ever, three stories plus a central tower rising up between two ancient oak trees, Scrolled iron cresting topped the distinctive mansard roof, the tower hiding the widow's walk at the back of the house, where my ancestors had once watched for barges coming down the river. Embedded in the corner of the lawn was a small plaque acknowledging the house as a national historic property and a stop on the Underground Railroad. So when Arden was a child, she was watching her two younger sisters in the yard of the house, and they were abducted by a stranger and never found again. Uh, Arden's parents divorced soon after, and Arden left town, and the novel starts when she returns 20 years later. I've read the first few chapters, and it's a creepy gothic mystery, but in a very familiar setting of an Iowa River town. Author Laura McHugh grew up in Keokuk, and her descriptions are spot on. This is her second novel after The Weight of Blood. Her latest thriller is The Wolf Once In. If you're interested in Arrowwood, Carnegie Stout Public Library has the ebook and digital audiobook in our Overdrive collections. To get to Overdrive, you just go to the library homepage and then digital collections, and then use your city resident library card to log in. And you can also use the free Libby app by Overdrive on Android or iOS. And if you need any help, just give us a call, 563-589-4225, or send an email to us at yourlibrarian at dubuque.lib.ia.us. Enjoy! Thanks, Ben, Becky, and Mike. As we mentioned earlier, if you have anything that you'd like to contribute to our weekly podcast, please email us a brief audio segment um, to yourlibrarian at dubuque.lib.ia.us. We hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. A big thank you to Becky, Ben, and Mike for their contributions, as well as Ben Eagle for recording and performing the music for our podcast. And a big shout out goes to Michael Kurth, our IT department manager, who has been putting together our YouTube videos and slideshow that go along with this podcast each week. We'll see you next time. <laughs>